Stay at home in Germany or move to the lab to die for? Dr. Alexander Schmidt decided on the latter, the National Institutes of Health near Washington. With 18,000 employees, it's the world's largest biomedical research institution. We're trying to develop vaccines here, especially vaccines against viral respiratory infections in small children. The transition from lab to clinic is difficult, and it requires a lot of money and manpower. The facilities at the NIH are impressive. The advantage here is that it's funded with federal money, so you don't have to write grant proposals that are limited to two or three or five years until the money is gone. It was these conditions that convinced Dr. Schmidt to move to the U.S. He gave up a position as junior professor at Berlin's largest hospital, Charité. A junior professor gets a relatively low salary, and the offer from the NIH was much better in terms of the research and in terms of the facilities, and the salary was around two or three times higher. Unlike many institutions in Germany, the NIH makes a strict distinction between research and medical practice. Sometimes Schmidt misses the contact with patients. In Berlin, I was doing intensive care medicine with children and emergency medicine. After working for half an hour, you've got your result, generally successful, not always, but there's immediate gratification. But Schmidt also sees the advantage of concentrating on his research. If you spend half the day researching and half seeing patients, you get less of both worlds. Research physicians always face that problem. Schmidt had already spent time abroad during his training. He was in the U.S., Britain and Japan. Although he likes working in the U.S., he still gets homesick sometimes. Of course I miss Germany. I miss my old friends, people I've known for 20 years, especially from my university days. Most of them are still in Berlin. Lots have families. I miss them. The researcher lives conveniently close to the National Institutes of Health. And he appreciates the relaxed atmosphere among his colleagues. Everyone is informal. They're on a first-name basis. Even the kind of people who would be highly eminent and reserved in Germany are relaxed and collegial here. The Schmidts have adapted well to life in the U.S. Their two children go to an American school. On Saturdays, they have German lessons. Alexander's wife, Anjali, also works, and she's pleased that her husband comes home at a regular hour. In Berlin, it used to get very late sometimes. It's great for the family. He's just five minutes away from home. He can come back at 5 or 5.30 and play with the children. So for our family life, it's much better. It seems that Germany may have to wait a while before the Schmitz decide to return.